so me and AJ began to wonder, and some others, well, if this is going on, like I said, what other part of the country is it? And uh, so looking at old maps and looking at old records, and Chris White's done up, dug up a lot of good information. And we've got a real arch tree that we uh, found in uh, Virginia. We had it verified in Virginia, North Carolina. And I got the first of those pin nuts from Georgia. And uh, we're going to skip down now uh, to Texas. And we're going to let Terrence tell us a little bit. He was showing me some pictures earlier. We've been going back and forth. Let me tell you what. This guy right here responds for I ever knew him online on Facebook about chinka pens and uh, he's been working trying to bring the wild turkey back in Texas where he's at and where he's at it's a part of Texas where it's almost like the uh, Ozark Ozarks dove underground and came back up so to speak it looks like it does uh, similar around here and he's been doing a lot of real good work and he's a good man and he's uh, sells real estate but he's already met with over 100 land owners about what to do about bringing back wild turkeys. Along with that, he's uh, spread that into uh, those are chicken pens. So I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about what he's seen uh, down in Texas and uh, take about three or four minutes if you would, let us know. Okay, so uh, a few years back, Wes, it's been a while. Uh, I've been president of a Harris County Wildlife Group of the National Wild Turkey Federation in the Houston area. Uh, in doing it, I'm a big habitat guy, so trees, uh, plants, stuff like that, uh, that's a uh, part of habitat that's good for turkeys and wildlife. That's always kind of been my thing. And I've looked into stuff like that. I've researched plants. And, uh, so years ago, uh, I came, I inherited the responsibility of my family's property in uh, Northeast Texas. And uh, I was coming up with some ideas to uh, get the habitat um, perfect for turkeys. Uh, and I, I got heavily into turkey restoration as a part of the NWTF. And so uh, in 2014, NWTF started, uh, restarted the stocking program for turkeys in East Texas. Initially, when they did this back in uh, the 1970s and 80s, only a few pockets. Uh, took where they did some releases and some of the turkeys actually uh, made it and had a stable population. The rest of East Texas, they kind of died out and mainly due to habitat. And so uh, Parks and Wildlife and WTF kind of got together. They've been doing research and looked uh, for areas where they can basically uh, store some test plots on uh, stocking turkeys. So they looked for the best habitat, looked for some of the reasons why turkeys uh, was dying out uh, in a lot of these areas. So uh, they came to find out that habitat was the biggest issue. A lot of people think predators, yeah, the predators will get them, uh, but the habitat is the main thing. And if it's good habitat, typically, even when I'm turkey hunting in the spots that we have, it's typically uh, the best populations are where the habitat is well managed, where there's some disturbance and burnings and thinning in, in certain areas, so it's not as easy for the predators to get them. So, uh, they recently started this program and we've established like turkey co-ops uh, and uh, it, the requirements are for a minimum of 10,000 acres of uh, contiguous habitat. And so uh, my family's little piece of land uh, in this area, it was small, so I'm like, well how can I come up uh, with the way to establish a co-op and get more land owners on board? And so uh, being that we're in real estate, we had a means to kind of look up and go through the tax rolls and look up and find numbers and email addresses uh, for landowners and property owners. So uh, reached out to a lot of uh, these landowners and uh, basically everybody was interested in getting turkeys back in the area. Uh, I've been a part of some of the initial stockings that they did in 2014 where the birds uh, have taken and gotten really established. And so uh, I had another guy He's about 15 miles, 15, 20 miles away from us, helped him set his co-op up, and uh, he passed, uh, it was like a two, three year process, same thing with me. He passed, got a release, and he's a big habitat guy also, so we both talk about uh, uh, chain pens and stuff like that. I've done a lot of research on chestnuts, so of course I come across American chestnuts, 
back then we'd done stuff. Probably in 2013, I actually sent Steve an email in 2013 about uh, chinky pins because I came across those looking into chestnuts. And we'd done some youth programs with NWTF where American Chestnut Foundation uh, sent a bunch of chestnut seedlings that uh, we took to the youth out. We had uh, foresters to come out and talk to them about masks for uh, turkeys and wildlife. And we let them plant chestnut trees uh, uh, on uh, some properties out there. So. Uh, Years later, I just really got more into uh, the native stuff that typically grew in the area. And so I uh, started, uh, got back to chinky pins, and I was like, well, let me, I was looking at the Allegheny chinky pen, and it was like, I'll put plant some of these on our place as a part of our habitat project. And uh, I was spoke to my grandmother, I was telling her about some of the stuff that I was thinking about planting out there. When I mentioned chinky pins, I mean, she's 88 years old, and she remembers chinky pins. She what do you know about chinky pins? And so, uh, so uh, she told me a little bit about them, how they used to pick them in that area when she was a little girl off the trees, knock them out the trees, and, and, and eat the nuts, and how sweet they were and stuff. So that got me even more fascinated. So um, I'd always been into, I'd always go to the site, I was on chinky pin foundation site, and just, uh, read the info on there and just read up what I could on chinky pens. So in this co-op, I educated while I got all these landowners together about wild turkeys and everybody was wanting to do that and we were working on habitat. I started speaking to them about chinky pens and Ozark chinky pens are saying, well, we're kind of on the range where Ozark and Allegheny was native to. And so everybody, I had a few people that responded, uh, some of the landowners, and they were the older ones, said, I've seen them, I don't know what chinky pen is. One of them told me I had, he had one on his place a bit when it died. So we put out the word, sent out some pictures, and just asked my co-op members to be on the lookout. We're trying to restore these, it's just like we're doing the turkeys in this area, because they're generally from this area. And I had a report back, someone told me I know where some trees is. Uh, on, on, on a friend's place. So uh, back in June after our evaluation, I went and I visited some of these uh, trees and he had two good sized trees on his place. And uh, he cleared it out. He was about to doze some of these trees. He didn't know what they were. Uh, he still showed some nuts to this guy, uh, a co-op member of mine. He was associated with the Department of Forestry. So he kind of knew a little bit about chinky pins. And he told him, oh, chinky pin nuts. And so, uh, he talked to me about it, took me out there, showed them to me. Uh, I got some pictures I shared with Steve and uh, went out there and I mean we we found those two big trees but along the hillside it's a bunch of seedlings and sprouts as well. I think he told that from with the small ones included we probably counted twelve trees out there on his on his property. And so doing the evaluation, there was a couple of other properties we saw chinky pants. So in this particular area, it's real hilly, it's similar to this with the type of trees and stuff that's growing. And it, uh, so I've been talking to some of our co-op uh, leaders in the area uh, about chinky pants. I've been sending out information. I had people, uh, I've spoken with biologists, a lot of them. Most of them never seen one, so it just hadn't been something that's on their radar. So basically, they're kind of on the lookout for chinky pens now, and just I've been really educating and getting the word out about chinky pens. And a lot of people in these co-ops, because of the purposes of wildlife and getting the wildlife a good food source on their places for wildlife, a lot of them are really interested in this now. So I know a couple of the co-ops in my area, in Anderson and Cherokee County, uh, they they have a high interest in uh, chinky pen and really getting involved with this and, and reestablishing the chinky pens in their area. So. Yeah, it was great to have him come up. Uh, we were needing someone from this area just like him, and, and uh, we, we got two of Marsha came in from the get go. We had a printer we were playing with, and we're like dragging our knuckles right on the cave wall. And she's like, oh, here we go. Now it's working. So, anyhow, so yeah, <laughs> this is already making a difference.